uh, Secretary Almendras, Ambassador Rosinio, um, Mr. Loxin, and uh, all the collaborators, curators, artists, um, NCCA Chair uh, De Leon, uh, the media, my friends of my favorite government department, the DFA, with the NCA. <laughs> and um, thank you for being here. It was many years ago when I had envisioned the Philippine participation in the Venice Biennale. It was the architecture Biennale that I witnessed first, and later on the art Biennale. And I could see small nations, small island states, having their own pavilions, or even just a small participation in the arsenal. And I felt like that with the robust and dynamic environment for art and culture in contemporary art in the Philippines, why was the Philippines conspicuously absent in the Venice Biennale? I asked diplomats, I asked government officials, I asked artists and curators and supporters of art and culture. No one could give me a clear answer why the Philippines was not in the Venice Biennale. I started working, I started pushing, I started putting things together, together with a very supportive NCCA and the DFA. And now, we're proud to say that the Philippines had a very successful Art Biennale participation, commended by institutions and by European media last year. And for the first time, we will participate, of course, in the Architecture Biennale. And 10 days ago, I think, if the staff did the work, they should have blasted the open call for the Art Biennale. Am I accurate? Yes. I asked them to blast it. I'm yes. micromanaging everything, even while I was in New York for the, for the climate agreement. Yes, they go like that. So um, just before I go to the Architecture Biennale, I just want everyone to spread the word that the open call for the Art Biennale has been sent out. And I say this in all urgency because the UK and Austria and many other countries have already announced their artist and curator for the Art Biennale of next year. Am I accurate? Yes. It is therefore our historic, our vision for this historic participation with our own national pavilion for the first time in the Architecture Biennale that will set a precedent when it comes to the support that the government can provide to Philippine arts and culture. Gone are the days when people would say that government does not support art and culture. Right, Chair Jun? And Rene, Secretary. <coughs> we must no longer put arts and culture, as well as heritage conservation and preservation, on the high quarters of our nation building. Because in truth, we are ready to let the world hear our proofs and our vision. The theme of the 15th Venice Architecture Biennale, reporting from the front, underscores the importance of the people's viewpoint in the process of building our cities and communities of present and future generations. My keen interest in the 15th Venice Architecture Biennale stems from my work and advocacy as a legislator and working with the United Nations as well. And we can see actually a parallelism perhaps even a dynamism and convergence between the recently signed climate agreement last Friday on Earth Day and reporting from the front and the architecture <coughs> banale when we are trying to preserve and conserve heritage. The Earth's vital signs, characterized by rising sea level, more intense droughts and heat waves, require a new way of designing and building homes, of infrastructure, of facilities and tangible structures. The world is faced with the biggest environmental challenge our generation has ever seen. And architects need to find relevance in these realities. Building better, building back better is an action. When homes and infrastructure are destroyed, people say we need to build better. But building homes and cities is not about having second chances. We have seen hundreds of thousands of lives lost due to severe weather events and disturbances, to floodings and storm surges and tsunamis. 
showing us all that the kinds of homes and facilities that we build and where we build them can mean either survival or death. This underscores the important role of architecture. Today's realities demand a new understanding that transcends the conventional notion that architecture merely means planning, designing, and constructing, constructing structures. Architecture needs to respond to human needs. Building is not only about creating new structures all the time. It is also about revitalizing communities, connecting the present with the past. Cities and its architecture, in a way, shape our personal narrative while allowing us to connect as a community. Our heritage, both tangible and intangible, is constantly under threat of extinction. When they say that the 1.5 degrees Celsius to 2.5 degrees Celsius, which I hope would never happen, will render one third of the world's biodiversity, flora and fauna, at the risk of extinction. I would like to think that we should add, it's not just the flora and fauna, but our tangible and intangible culture as well, which would include our architecture. We've already lost some of our historic structures from natural catastrophes and long decades of neglect. With every instance in which our built heritage has been toppled down and turned to rubble, we lose a part of our identity and that unifying element that binds us as a nation. As we offer the world a glimpse of our built heritage through Mohon, I just love the title, Mohon. We initiate a dialogue on the progress of our architecture and issues on preservation and conservation of our heritage. I've always envisioned the Philippines to be part of the global art conversation to make the Venice Biennale a venue to promote the country's diplomatic agenda through cultural diplomacy. I'm also happy to note that I think after many, many years, finally, the cultural diplomacy unit of your DFA is already funded. Our historic first participation at the Venice Architecture Biennale comes at the heels of the Philippines' successful re-entry to the 56th Venice Art Biennale in 2015 and our succeeding participation next year. By our participation in these important events, we hope to lend our voice with the rest of the world as we seek to create a sustainable future for all. We are happy to note that we are one of the five nations, along with Seychelles, I believe, that are first time participants <coughs> in the 15th Architecture Biennale. I am very happy that my colleagues in government, namely the NCCA and the DFA, have been very dynamic in our convergence between and among government agencies. Because I, as your chairman of the Committee on Finance, and as an advocate of our participation in this global conversation through the Venice Biennale could not do it alone. So without the proactive role that the DFA has played and the support of our posts abroad, and without the partnership, the dynamic, flawless partnership with Chair June and the NCCA, I could not have done it. So thank you very much. And of course, um, Ambassador Lucino has been very, very supportive. So congratulations to Mr. Luxin and his brilliant team. Muhon, I am certain, will create not just ripples, but a storm surge and tsunami in Europe and in the world. Thank you. Thank you.